Hey everybody, what's up? It's Ed O'Keefe and just a quick mini episode of the Ed O'Keefe Show on the concept of happiness and I'm going to back up one step, talk a little bit about parenting. I know it's kind of crazy, so if you're not a parent, don't hang up on this. <laughs> People always ask me the question about like, well, Ed, how do you and your wife raise so many kids? And one of the answers I give and is, you know, we're just making it up as we go along and I think it's true. <laughs> You know, like when you have kids early, like, and this is, this will come back full circle to happiness in just a second. You can read all the books and those books help, right? There's a certain point though, where each kid is so uniquely different and you like for us, anyhow, you're doing all these different things that you kind of have to find your own path. You kind of got to figure out your own parenting style, figure out what you want to believe in and do all that fun stuff. And so it's kind of like happiness too. So let me go back to happiness is that if you asked me the question, like, why do you always seem happy or positive? I'd say, well, first and foremost, I'm not, (laughs) you know, or maybe it's because when things aren't so happy and positive, the magic superpower skill is to find what's good in it at the time and work from there. And, you know, if you've ever listened to any of this stuff before, I talk about how you have to take responsibility that it might not be your fault, but it's your responsibility, all those things, right? So let's just, uh, and by the way, you heard beeping because we're in my car. But I want to talk about happiness here for a second because I want to talk about accumulating things. And I'm not afraid of accumulating things. I don't think you necessarily have to be someone who believes that you shouldn't acquire things in life. But one concept that I want to share with you is that just like goals... A lot of times before I had my first BMW, I was obsessed about having the BMW. And when I got it, I was very excited that I had it. And then, you know, comes the Porsche and then the next Porsche and then comes the house and then all these things, right? And I always get amazed by the concept that people will look at you and they'll say, oh, that's so cool that you have that. I wish I had that. As if having that is going to make you happy. Now, there's some luxuries that I love. Like, for example, I'm staring at my sport court in my backyard. I think it's one of the best things ever. But it's one of the best things ever because part of the thing that causes happiness is who I get to share it with. And that's really where I was going to go is I've been around people that are financially, they never have to worry about money ever again from the perspective of they'll never have to work another day of their life. However, those people seem to be actively busy doing something that is extremely interesting, challenging, rewarding for them. And then if I look at my circle of friends at who seems to be the happiest, what I find is that the people that are doing things that light them up. And I have to say that most of the time, those things that light people up have a lot to do with either one of probably two or three buckets, but one bucket definitely is that they're doing stuff that is physically challenging. Like they're just challenging themselves. And something I've been playing with a lot in the last year is noticing that when I go to train to observe what's really being chiseled, is it my body or is it really my mind? And what I found, I don't know about you, you may have a different perspective on it, is that when you do things that are physically challenging, the mind is actually getting the biggest rewards from it and happiness comes from that. Now with that, if you don't know why or what you are training for or working towards, the mundane components of it can really hit you, right? And so one of the things I wanted to share was on that note is that the people who seem to be happiest seem to be people who are proactively pursuing a goal that will create a feeling of wealth, of abundance, of achievement, of joy. And it's not necessarily, in most cases, I would say it's not at all possession-based. Meaning, in most cases, when you live in North America or you live in, you know, first world society, most of us, even though we have money concerns, we have find, you know different issues, we don't have to worry about things like pursuing walking three miles to get clean water or whether our kids are going to suffer an illness because of unclean water. We don't have to worry about those problems, right? So the things that create the best joys in life seem to be either A, when pursuing an accomplishment or a goal that is not going to fade 
because it has an everlasting effect, right? So you may do some physical challenge and it'll fade, but you always have those memories, right? And the second bucket that I want to talk about was contribution to others or making others better. Or it's one of those things where the thing that probably gives me the most joy in life is probably coaching athletes, volleyball players. It's probably always been one of the best things. I always would tell people that the most exciting components, there was no, and I told my wife this too, I said, you know, there's no better feeling than driving home after that first night of practice with a brand new team and you get to see the their eyes brighten up because they're hearing things for the first time that are going to change how they interpret this game forever. That's contribution. So the first one is something that is physically extremely tough. Third bucket is, or second bucket is contributing to others. And the third bucket is what is the thing that you are constantly hungry to continue to learn and it's extremely challenging for you and you're always growing. And when I say extremely challenging, I don't mean like you can't get it. Like, so for example, say geometry, which I'm just making this up, or trigonometry might be something that I was never able to get, quote unquote. That's not that's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about something that you probably do pretty well or really uniquely well, and you have a hunger and a thirst to continue to get better at it. Now, if you've read my book, Time Collapsing, I do talk about this. If you've ever studied Dan Sullivan from Strategic Coach, he talks a lot about unique abilities. Or Kathy Colby at the, she has a book called, I think actually I think it's called Unique Abilities. But one of the things, I mean, I was listening to Tim Ferriss' podcast today. He was talking about how the most successful people he's ever met are usually flawed human beings that have one attribute that is usually exceptionally, they do extraordinarily well. But you got to step back and ask yourself, well, how could they do it extraordinarily well? Well, because they probably fell in love with doing it and they pursued greatness either consciously or accidentally or they stumbled on it. But once they hit it, they continued to follow that trail. And our society has always taught us to focus on our weaknesses. Oh, you have strengths. That's great. Love your strengths. But here's the class you stunk at. This is where you got the C minus. So we got to get you a tutor in, say, science. When you suck at science, you hate science, you're never going to be good at science, right? So a tutor maybe will help you get a better grade. But at the end of the day, becoming exceptional at life, this game called life, and becoming extremely happy means you do things that you want to do and you want to excel at. I just got done listening to a training call, a specific topic. It's within marketing and sales, two things I love talking about, love learning about. And honestly, guys, like I listen to marketing, advertising, traffic generation, all those things every single day. <laughs> and where some people I know are complete experts at all kinds of things. So it'd be too long of a list, but some people love coaching. Some people love training people physically. Some people love stock market, you know, investing. And that's what they want to talk about. And I would bet most of them are then spending time learning about that thing. So your job in life, I guess if I'm going to give one to do today <laughs> is to find out and to really ask yourself, what is that thing that lights me up? that I love learning more about, that I naturally do pretty well, that my friends would say, oh, that's totally what he or she does. And the second part is, how can you tie that with helping more people? Because those are natural, natural fits. Like it usually aligns very well. The people I know who do the most amount of money in their businesses, and usually from a product development or coaching type components, tend to align the part three we talked about with contributing to the world. That's usually where it is. It does not, I can name a few exceptions that I'm close to where, you know, their thing that they're exceptional at allows them to generate so much wealth or income that they're then able to contribute more in a totally different vein or vehicle. But the third bucket usually feeds the second bucket, okay? And then the first bucket, listen, we're all doing things. We all fall into things in life where we're going to have to deal with things that cause us to suffer or struggle or go through things. Now, where athleticism and physical training really is in phase one, in my opinion, in a lot of ways, is that once you lose your physical bucket, once that physical bucket goes, you really, really have a hard time 
fuel lane, bucket three and bucket two. Now, there's a couple things I didn't mention in this little mini podcast. Well, and that's why they're called mini podcasts. So I didn't mention spirituality. I didn't mention God. I didn't mention your faith. That's probably time for a different podcast all alone. But I would say that has a huge component on happiness. I didn't mention tribe and community and family, which I would say if you don't have a big family like I do, Okay, I'm very fortunate, grew up in a big family, and my wife and I had a big family. The component of the community being something that you feel a part of something, which could be part of, by the way, we're going back to bucket three, something you're exceptional at, you find a community that you're a part of, and then you contribute in a way, and you build your own community. That's a great business model. Usually you find other people who are doing something similar, pretty awesome. But if people do not feel part of something, Sapiens is a book that I haven't even read it, but I know the premise of it is we are tribal creatures as human beings. And if you isolate yourself, which is a big fear that happens within, it's a big fear that happens when kids are so into, you know, Fortnite and all these other things and people are behind the screens, the isolation happens, which that's another whole topic in and of itself. But anyhow, hope you like this. You get to make it up. You get to define what makes you happy. You get to define what you think you're great at. You get to define how you want to contribute to the world. You get to choose your athletic challenges based on where you are at in life right now. You do not have to be like anybody else. You get to do it. If it challenges you, go do it. And if you want to be part of something great, go find those people. And so that's it. Cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Like I've said a few times before, if you want a 90-minute highlight reel of how we generate traffic to websites, I brought together a bunch of amazing guys, one of my tribes, to one of our events. And for listeners of this podcast at trafficmasterylive.com, trafficmasterylive.com, you can check out the 90 minutes. And we have a couple of events coming up as well for those who are running your own e-com online businesses and would like to see what we do. So that's my little plug on that. And I hope you're awesome. Have a great day. And if you like this, let us know because we'll do more. All right. Peace out. Hope you're awesome. Bye-bye.